Welcome to Think Tech on Spectrum OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Elise Anderson. And I'm Arby Kelly. In our show this time, we'll review the most recent top five Think Tech talk shows and staff pick. We'll check out the elements of the best of the best and get a handle on the public issues and the guests involved. Think Tech produces more than 35 talk shows every week in our downtown high tech green screen studio. Here's a list of all our incredible Think Tech shows and hosts. As you can see, they're very diverse, and their coverage is also very diverse, showing you things you might never have otherwise known. Every week, ThinkTech chooses its top five ThinkTech talk shows from the week before, based on the number of views each of them has had on the internet. For this past week, the winning shows were as follows. Number one, from the series Beyond the Lines, hosted by Rusty Kamori. It's called Hawaii Tennis Open, Beyond World Class Tennis, with director Ben Goldsmith and Jared Karsten. On this episode of Beyond the Lines, we officially announced the Hawaii Open Professional Tennis Tournament at the Blaisdell Arena, featuring some of the best men and women tennis professionals in the world. ThinkTech viewers were the first to know the details of this premier world-class tennis event featuring U.S. Open finalist Kei Nishikori and Wimbledon French Open champion Garbine Muguruza. You bought a pro tennis tournament? I did. After years of being with Dell, I saw the possibilities and thought, you know what, this looks easy. Uh, I'm just going to buy one of these, <laughs> one of these days. <laughs> and it's not so easy. Uh, I will say that. But yes, that was the first thing I did after leaving Dell is bought a tennis tournament. We started out in Carlsbad and that led us to another one in uh, San Antonio, Texas, and we then moved Carlsbad here to Hawaii, which became the Hawaii Open okay. um, at the 125 level event. You moved your WTA event to Hawaii, yep. and you, you, you ran the tournament for the last two years at Central Oahu Regional Park. Yep. And it was a, a great event. Great event. We, in fact, the first year sold more tickets than, in fact, both tickets, both, both years we sold more tickets than any other 125 worldwide. Yeah. So our crowd size was there. We just couldn't get enough of them to come from Oahu out to Corp. It, it's, it's a drive. Yeah. Ben and I met during one of those meetings, just kind of happened. And I, I think I reached out to him afterwards through an email. And let them know that, um, hey Ben, I, there's there you guys may need me be in need of an MC, and I may be the only person in Hawaii that regularly MCs tennis events along For with sure. along with my boss Bruce. Number two from the series Hawaii Nikkei Now, hosted by Russell Honma, it's called the Future of the Hawaii Japan Relationship. The discussion was in Japanese with guest George Ariyoshi, former governor of Hawaii. The dialogue focused on Governor Ariyoshi's political history and efforts to cement relations between Hawaii and Asia. He was born and raised in Honolulu to Issei parents from Japan and was the first Japanese-American governor in the United States. He went to Japanese language school in Hawaii and speaks fluent Japanese. Over the course of his career, he has dedicated himself to the promotion of Hawaii as a bridge to Asia. <laughs> え、パパはあの、その時来た時はあ、一緒じゃなかったのね。まだあ、あっていなかった。パパは船乗りでした。船乗りで、ハワイにちょっと船の日本の船が来て、水やら食べ物を集めて、いろいろに。その時、あ、
八幡山という名前ですよ。もうそうもやっててなんか。Number three in the series Hawaii Together, hosted by Kaylee Iakina. It's called A Run for Office, exploring an uphill battle with guest Steve Lipscomb. Following a career in the U.S. Air Force and then in the tech industry, Steve Lipscomb decided to throw his hat into the ring and run in the Hawaii Republican primary for lieutenant governor. We looked into what motivated him, what did he gain, and what did he learn. What motivates an exemplary citizen to dive into politics for an uphill battle? I'm a big pro-U.S. sort of guy. I've been all over the world. I've lived all over the world. I've been in combat zones. I've been in peace areas. I've seen the best the world has to offer. I've seen the worst. I've seen、uh, where civilizations where people are sort of afraid to be a policeman,、uh, or where the police officer force is corrupt. So America is a great place, and I'm a big pro-American kind of guy. Now, does this mean you don't see any of the problems that we face today, or the in- <coughs> difficulties, the inequity, or? No, definitely. I mean, of all the places I would live, I'd still live in America, and certainly there's always going to be challenges to overcome. But that's what that's what we do. You recently ran for lieutenant governor in the Republican Party. I did. Why did you do that? First of all, the the motto here is no vote, no grumble. So the next level up from that is you can't complain about the system if you haven't tried to be part of the system to correct it. So the two two glaring issues I saw was monopoly in government, which is a real challenge for democracy when you have only one party. Uh, it breaks the whole republic democracy sort of model, and there's no room for robust debate on topics,、um, and there's no real watchdog function to make sure that we the people's money is being spent correctly. And I think we're seeing、um, the result of that is increasing taxes all the time because there's no watchdog on the spending. Number four from the series Code Green, hosted by Howard Wig. It's called Carbon Be Gone via Carbon Lighthouse: Millions of Data Points, Years of Diligence, with guest Stephanie Jurgensen. In this episode of Code Green, we did a deep dive into building functions in order to identify potential energy savings through thorough analysis and continuous retrofitting. Our process is、um, essentially three steps. The first step, we deploy sensors like this one here.、Mm-hmm. And we deploy hundreds of these throughout the building, and hundreds of sensors we leave in place for a month or two,、mm-hmm. and they're gathering data on one to five minute intervals. If we do that math, hundreds of sensors, one to two months, one to five minute intervals, we're looking at an original data set that's literally millions of new data points.、Mm-hmm. This is what allows us to uncover those hidden inefficiencies in buildings, and then find more efficient ways. Of using the same equipment that's already in the building brings up an analogy: when you go for a medical checkup, the doctor can maybe take your pulse, take your blood pressure. Ah,、eh, you're fine. Get out of here. Or he can order any number of blood tests and a, a lot of other tests to look for your whole lymph system and everything else, and get way, way, way down deep 
into how your system works as a whole. So we've had a lot of success here in Hawaii, and, and so far we've worked with like Alexander and Baldwin is one great example, and this is at mm -hmm. Manoa Marketplace. Um, the upgrades that we've done at their Manoa Marketplace, and the next couple of slides, I believe, are Pearl Highland Center. Mm -hmm. um, the upgrades that we've done there have resulted in reducing nearly 10,000 tons of carbon mm -hmm. and saving over 22,000 barrels of oil. Mm -hmm. So and that's probably a few dollars, too. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yes. it, it is. We, I'll let you do the math mm -hmm. yourself there. Um, but Alexander and Baldwin is, committing to, is committed to enhancing the local community, mm -hmm. and this partnership enables them to be um, good stewards of the environment, as well as improving their carbon footprint. Number five, in the series Pacific Partnerships in Education, hosted by Ethan Allen, it's called Go Your Own Way. Chuuk and the Federated States of Micronesia, Chuuk is making plans to separate from the FSM with guest Joaquim Jojo Peter. We discussed the much talked about plans for Chuuk to separate itself from the FSM. We explored the potential costs and benefits to Chuuk, to the FSM, and to other countries, and focused on the implications for education if this plan is enacted. In our ever-changing world, it's worthwhile to carefully consider potential impacts of political changes on the societies affected. Recently, I, the, the, the legislature uh, commissioned a group to look at other potential terms or look at potential relationship change, if there needs to be any, uh, that would uh, better serve the Chukis people. Okay. And the commission went out and they did their work and uh, they suggested and they recommended to the, to the legislature that it should be put in front of the voters an opportunity to vote for an independent Chuk, hmm. an independent nation from the Federated States of Micronesia. Hmm. And that's where we are now. Later on this summer, the ambassador for, uh, for, the, for the United States to FSM mm -hmm. came to Chuk and he held a meeting, a public meeting, an open forum, and basically said, you know, while the United States will not interfere with the sovereignty or the decision for sovereignty, uh, the right. sovereignty decision of the, of the people of Chuk, he can say that the United States will not most likely not negotiate mm -hmm. a compact with a separate a separate Chuk. Mm -hmm. Some Chukis feel they have gotten short shrift within the FSM, right? They are the most right. populous state, but they do not get, apparently, at least according right. to some, their fair share of the resources from the compact, right? That's, well, that's one of the major arguments right. that the commissioner, I mean, or at least the commission for this separation movements have advanced. Staff pick from the series Think Tech Asia, hosted by Jay Fidel. It's called, How Do Film and Media Reflect and Affect History? The Intersection of Media and History, with guest Scott Bailey. Professor Bailey teaches world history, Japanese history, and Asian history at Kansai Gaidai University in Hyogo, Japan. He received his PhD from UH Manoa and taught at UC Berkeley before moving to Japan. In addition to his interest in film and history, he has published on the Russian colonization of Central Asia, the history of travel and research expeditions, geography, ethnography, and economic and social history. The discussion focused on the intersection of the media and history, and how film and media reflect and also affect history. The movie JFK, uh, which was produced by Oliver Stone, and Stone is one of my favorite filmmakers, uh, who's obviously, he's made a lot of films about American history. Um, and, and kind of exposing some of the maybe um, <laughs> lesser known elements of, of American history and, and maybe kind of a darker side. And sometimes, sometimes conspiratorial. To, sometimes he's been labeled as a conspiracy, uh, a conspiratorial director, you might say. Yeah. Um, but on the other hand, you know, among people who study film and history, like myself, sco many scholars believe that, that Stone is actually very historically minded. Um, and that, you know, the, the kind of um, effort that he makes in, in producing films, in getting consultants who are professional historians, is, is actually really admirable. How important is it mm -hmm. that the theater goer, the average person, not the PhD in history, <laughs> the average person study up on Stone before you go to see that movie? I would encourage everyone, you know, and I think this is a, is a, is a broader issue for the media in general, 
everyone should really uh, be doing a more active job of trying to analyze who are the producers of the media that they're consuming. Uh, I think most people, as you, as you kind of alluded to, are, are somewhat passive uh, you know, receptors for, for the media that they consume. Um, but it's important for us to, for all of us to, to at least know, okay, what are, what are the, the basic beliefs that this person is bringing? What, are, what is the background that this person is bringing to, the, to their project? You can always find the links to these shows in our daily email advisories. If you don't already get our daily email advisories, you can sign up to get them on thinktechhawaii.com. These are only samplings from the top five in staff pick from across our 35 weekly talk shows. There are, of course, many more. To see these shows in their entirety, go to thinktechhawaii.com or youtube.com slash thinktechhawaii. Great diversity, great community, great content at ThinkTech. If you have any questions or comments about these or any of our shows, please let us know. And yes, it's okay to share them with your friends and colleagues. Thanks so much for watching our shows and for supporting our efforts at ThinkTech. And now let's check out our ThinkTech schedule of events going forward. ThinkTech broadcasts its talk shows live on the internet from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekends, and some people listen to them all night long and on the weekends. If you missed a show, or if you want to replay or share any of our shows, they're all archived on demand on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. For our audio stream, go to thinktechhawaii.com slash audio. And we post all our shows as podcasts on iTunes. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links. Or better yet, sign up on our email list and get our daily email advisories. ThinkTech has a high-tech green screen studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to see it or be part of our live audience, or if you want to participate in our shows, contact shows at thinktechhawaii.com. If you want to pose a question or make a comment during a show, call 808-374-2014 and help us raise public awareness on ThinkTech. We are always looking for new shows. Here are some shows we've recently added to our talk show lineup. Tourism 101, hosted by Mufi Hanneman, former mayor of Honolulu and executive director of the Hawaii Lodging and Tourism Association. It plays monthly on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. and covers tourism. It's a study of events and developments in Hawaii tourism. Pinoy Power Hawaii, hosted by Emmy Ortega Anderson. It plays weekly on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. and covers Filipino news, events, and culture. The Will of the People, hosted by Martha Randolph. 
It plays bi-weekly on Thursdays at 1 p.m. and covers politics and political opinion. Global Connections, hosted by our old friend Carlos Juarez. It emanates from Mexico City and plays on alternate Wednesdays at 2 p.m. It covers current issues in international relations and foreign policy. All great, all worth watching, and of course all worth learning from. Go ahead, give us a thumbs up on YouTube, or send us a tweet at ThinkTechAHI. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives in these islands and in this country. We want to stay in touch with you, and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together. And now, here's this week's ThinkTech commentary. Hi, I'm Jay Fidel. I want to do a book review today as a commentary for ThinkTech Hawaii. Let's look at 21 Lessons for the 21st Century by Yuval Noah Harari, an Israeli Oxford-trained historian. It was published last month, August, in English and Spanish, and reviewed in every newspaper you can think of. The review in the New York Times was by Bill Gates. Harari was an obscure Israeli academic when he wrote Sapiens, a Hebrew language history of humanity. It was translated into English in 2014 and sold over a million copies. In Sapiens, he explored our past and went from the discovery of fire to the creation of cyborgs in 500 pages. In Homo Deus, also a bestseller, he looked to our future. With 21 Lessons, he turns to the present to make sense of today's most pressing concerns. It's an incredible book. 21 Lessons is a collection of 21 mind-expanding essays, including essays on religion, morality, artificial intelligence, climate change, terrorism, work, war, immigration, education, and many others. He covers universal basic income, freedom, equality, fake news, and post-truth fascism, justice, secularism, and education, and of course, nationalism, authoritarianism, and Trumpism. He organizes these 21 lessons into five related themes. The technological challenge, the political challenge, despair and hope, truth, and resilience. The book is intended to give us the tools to ward off arrogance, ignorance, nihilism, and other primitive isms, and to allow us to become better progressive modern human beings. He untangles political, technological, social, and existential issues and offers advice on how we can get ready for a very different future, how we can retain freedom when big data manipulates us, what will the workforce look like, and how we can prepare for it, why is liberal democracy now in crisis, are nations and religions still relevant? How do computers and robots change the meaning of being human? As our technology moves faster, hacking becomes a tactic of war, and the world becomes more polarized than ever. There are plenty of reasons for concern. As Harari writes in his introduction, what are today's greatest challenges and most important changes? What should we pay attention to? What should we teach our kids? The trick for ameliorating our anxieties is not to stop worrying, it's to know what to worry about and how much to worry. Harari's principal question is, how do you live in an age of bewilderment, when the old stories have collapsed and no new story has yet emerged to replace them? He says we have built huge complicated societies beyond our biological limitations. The world is a scary, fast-changing place for our species. How can we cope with these changes? Harari says, in a world deluged by irrelevant information, clarity is power. As an historian, I cannot give people food or clothing, but I can try to offer some clarity, thereby helping to level the global playing field. And he does. Harari's extraordinary skill is his ability to smash ideas together into aha moments and dazzling observations but he offers little in the way of solutions. Meditation comes closest. Given his emphasis on awareness and mindfulness, that's not a bad idea. Harari's unique ability to make sense of where we've come from and where we're going has captured the imagination of readers everywhere. In 21 Lessons, he now invites us to consider values, 
meaning, and personal engagement in a world full of noise and uncertainty. That's an invitation worth accepting. If you're interested in identifying and in dealing with the sea changes that befall us now in the 21st century, this book is for you. It should also be required reading for every politician and every thought leader. I'm Jay Fidel. Mahalo. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. The Atherton Family Foundation, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology, Hawaiian Electric Companies, the High Tech Development Corporation, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Integrated Security Technologies, Kamehameha Schools, Dwayne Carisu, Carol Mon Lee and the Friends of ThinkTech, MW Group Limited, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sidney Stern Memorial Trust, the Volo Foundation, Eureka J. Sugimura. Okay, Arby, that wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on Spectrum OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Arby does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more Think Tech videos, and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on Think Tech, visit ThinkTechHawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our Think Tech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and global awareness in Hawaii, and of course, the ongoing search for innovation wherever we can find it. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important Think Tech episode. I'm Elise Anderson. And I'm Arby Kelly. Aloha, everyone. Mm -hmm.